Hi guys, welcome back to Mobile Learning. I really missed you. I hope you all had a really great Easter vacation. Um, it's time for Bible, so let's pray. God, thank you so much for um, just keeping us safe over vacation. Thank you for um, for the time of celebration of Easter, of resurre your resurrection. And God, I just uh, pray that you'll be with us in these next several weeks as we um, finish up our school year. And Lord, help us to um, just be aware of everything that you are showing us and teaching us. And God, um, as we look at what you did in Paul's life, we just pray that you would um, do mighty works in us too, that we would serve you and have the attitude that he did um, because he loved you the most. And so that's what we want to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So we left Paul and Barnabas um, in Jerusalem. So if you remember before we studied about Easter, they um, had taken an offering. Remember the church at Antioch wanted to um, give an offering to the believers in Jerusalem because that famine was coming. And so that's the last time we saw them. So they gave the offering in Jerusalem and then they went back to the church in Antioch. And so I want you to turn to your Bibles in Acts chapter 13. Okay, so they go back to the church in Antioch, and um, you can see in verse 2 of chapter 13, sorry, the page is number 1228, so uh, verse 2 of chapter 13, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So God is calling them out away from the church in Antioch, and, and we can see that they're, um, there were many teachers and prophets already in the church of Antioch because God was growing people. He was growing all those believers. So now God wanted Paul and Barnabas to leave the church of Antioch and um, call them to other places. So in verse 3, we see, Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, verse 4, So then, being sent by the Holy Spirit, they, sail, they went down to Seleucia, and um, they sailed to Cyprus in verse 5. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also had John, also known John, as John Mark, um, as their assistant. So here we can see up here is where the church of Antioch is. Okay, So they went down to Seleucia, and then they got a ship, and they sailed to the island of Cyprus. And they started here in Salamis. And then they went over here to Paphos. So one of the stories we're studying today takes place here in Paphos. And this is the Mediterranean Sea. Um, this is the land of Israel right here. So that gives you kind of a, an idea of where they were going. Okay. So let's look on um, chapter 13, verse 6. Now we're on page 1229. Okay. So um, they'd gone through the island to Paphos. And they found a certain sorcerer. Okay, so I have to give you, um, this is kind of a confusing passage. It's a really exciting story. But we've got this guy, the sorcerer, okay? His name is Bar-Jesus, but he's also known as Elymas, okay? And he's a sorcerer, a false prophet. He grew up Jewish, but he had turned away from living for God. And he was a sorcerer and a false prophet. Now, this guy works for this guy. Now, his name is Sergius Paulus, and I don't want you to get mixed up because, remember, Paul is a Roman name. So, Sergius Paulus, he is something called a proconsul, which in terms that we would know um, would be like governor, so kind of the governor of Paphos. His name was Sergius Paulus, and this guy, you can call him Bar-Jesus or you can call him Elymas, um, he worked for Sergius Paulus, okay? So, Get an idea who this guy is. Sorcerer, false prophet, okay? All right, so look at verse 6. Um, now, when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. Now, this man, Sergius Paulus, the governor, the Roman governor, okay, um, he was an intelligent man, and he called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. So he gave an invitation to Paul and Barnabas to come because 
he was really interested in knowing God's word. And he had an idea that these guys were the teachers that could tell him about that. But look at verse 8. But Elymas, remember, also known as Bar-Jesus, the sorcerer, the false prophet, prophet. But when Elymas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. So this guy, Bar-Jesus, is standing in the way. He does not want Paul and Barnabas to come and talk to his boss. He's trying to keep them away from talking to Sergius Paulus. He's trying to keep Saul, Sergius Paulus from understanding faith in Jesus. He's trying to prevent him from hearing the good news. But look at verse 9. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, we knew that, so we didn't have to be confused by that. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and looked intently at him, the sorcerer. And he said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Whew. But that's what that guy was doing. He was not letting the good news come to Sergius Paulus. And so I understand why Paul was saying that. And so verse 11, And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. Remember when we talked about spiritual blindness? So this guy definitely had spiritual blindness, um, and he was going to have physical blindness for a time as well. And immediately, this is verse 11, the second part, and immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Now, boys and girls, he is no longer standing in the way of the proconsul. He is no longer preventing the good news coming to Sergius Paulus. So verse 12, look what happens. Then the proconsul believed, Sergius Paulus believed. And when he saw what had been done, being astonished, at the teaching of the Lord. So boys and girls, God is more powerful than anything that will stand in his way. And so this uh, sorcerer who was spiritually blind was also physically blind for a time. We don't know how long, but we know for a time. So hopefully before the time was up, he believed just like Saul had turned into Paul on the road to Damascus. Okay, so pretty exciting, right? But um, it ended up with this Roman governor, this proconsul, Sergius Paulus, believing in Jesus. Okay, so now um, Paul and Barnabas are leaving the island of Cyprus. They visited these two towns, Salamis and Paphos. And now they are going to set sail, and they're going to come up to Perga, and then they're going to go to this place. Now, remember they were in the church of Antioch, we call that Syrian Antioch. Now they're going to a place called Pisidian Antioch. Okay, so they're a long way from home, and they are in this city of Antioch, Pisidian Antioch. Okay, so um, John Mark leaves uh, Paul and Barnabas, and let's pick up um, verse 14. Okay, so let me just explain something. So every time Paul and Barnabas went to a new city, where they would go first was the Jewish synagogue, and they would preach to the people there, which made sense because, remember, um, God's word came to the Jewish people first, and so um, that's where, where they would head is to the synagogues. So verse 14 of chapter 13. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So they're just being part of the um, Sabbath service in the, in the synagogue. And after reading the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them saying, men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. So they were reading the scripture, having their service, their Sabbath service, and then they open it up to everybody there saying, does anybody have any um, encouraging things to say, anything that we can learn from. And so Paul stood up, verse 16, Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. And then Paul goes into this big sermon um, talking about um, Jewish history, all the things that God had done with the Israelites and how God sent his very own son 
to them and how Jesus died and rose again and is in heaven and is willing to forgive their sins through his death and resurrection. So he, he goes through that whole sermon. So let's look at, um, let's go to, sorry, I lost my place. Let's go down to verse 42. Okay, so after Paul's message to the people in the synagogue, so when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So the Jews are coming out of the synagogue and they are just like, oh my goodness, I can't believe all this. And they're so excited. And the Gentiles, they're saying, hey, can we hear this too? Can, can you preach these same words next Sabbath? They're asking Paul. Um, and so, uh, verse 43, now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. That means all the, the people that really wanted to know more, they were following Paul and Barnabas and speaking with them and uh, persuaded them, hey, keep going with uh, preaching the grace of God. And so, verse 44, it's the next Sabbath. And look at verse 44 of chapter 13. We're on page 1230. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Isn't that exciting? But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with, what do you see there in verse 44? They were filled with envy. We've seen this before, haven't we? When those Jewish leaders heard Jesus, they were filled with envy and they wanted to stop him. The same thing is happening. They're hearing about Jesus and they want it stopped. They're filled with envy. And they start um, saying contradicting Things and they're blaspheming and they're opposing the things spoken by Paul. Verse 46, then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. So they told those Jewish leaders, you know what? We have presented the truth to you. You've not listened. You are telling us no. You're rejecting eternal life. You're turning away from that. So we're just going to go to the Gentiles. They want to hear the word of God. And then they quote scripture about how God said that I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. So verse 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, how do you think they felt? Yeah, they were glad and they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many has been had been appointed to eternal life believed. So there were so many Gentiles. They were so excited to hear that their sins could be forgiven. That this man, Jesus, the son of God, came to die for them and rose again so that they could have eternal life. They started believing. So we end this uh, section with verse 49 through 52. And the word of the Lord was being spread through all the regions. So all those new believers are telling other people, let me tell you what I just learned. And so it's spreading all throughout that region. But remember the Jews that were filled with envy, that were opposing everything Paul and Barnabas said? Well, they haven't gone away. Okay, so look at verse 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city and raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. Expelled means you get out of here. They are taking them, removing them from their region. But verse 51, Paul and Barnabas shook the dust from their feet against them and they came to the next city, which was Iconium. And we'll read about that tomorrow. So I want you to take a look at that very last verse, verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. That seems kind of opposite, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem like they'd be mad? Doesn't it seem like they'd be upset? They just got kicked out of Pisidian Antioch for preaching the word of God. But no, the Bible says that they were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. They had hearts of gratitude. They were so excited that God's word was received by so many Gentiles. And you know what? They just felt like Jesus was persecuted. If we're persecuted, we're just going to experience joy from that. And they were ready to move on to the next city. So um, our memory verse this week is Philippians 1, 
21. It's very short, but very powerful, okay? This is what um, Paul wrote to the Philippians. He said, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He was saying, hey, as long as I'm here on earth, I have Christ and I'm living for Christ and it's all great. But if I die, it's going to be even better. So that's how he uh, thought about all the trials and persecutions he went through. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay, that's it for today. Um, you have a Google slide to finish for me. There's, uh, I believe, six slides and you're going to be typing some of the things that um, you imagine the people might say. You're going to be looking up some of the verses that we just read to fill that in. So I hope you enjoy doing that. We'll see you later.